Hello everybody. Yesterday I uploaded two videos about the current carrying capacity of traces, which means what is the temperature of a trace when it's heated by a certain electric current. And I showed that it's very easy with, to be done with simulation. You just create a rectangle which is representing the trace and then you add two other rectangles representing the electric current, input and output. The result of the simulation is the temperature of the trace on this board, but the temperature depends on what's the board like. Now many people think that it's sufficient to know about the IPC design rule 2221, but I will show in this session that it's not. Let me open a PowerPoint presentation. Our question is, can the current carrying capacity be determined by the design rule IPC 2221? The answer is yes, sometimes it is possible, sometimes it's not. And that's the scope of this presentation. But first, let me define some variables. We have a trace on a board, given length, width and height, and we impose some current. Question is, what's the temperature? What is easy to do is to calculate the power in the trace. The power is given by Joule's law, the product of voltage drop times electric current or resistance times square of the current. We must know a procedure to, def to get the resistance. The resistance is a term like this. this the, higher the, the longer the trace, the higher the resistance and the smaller the cross section, the higher the resistance. And we have to multiply this geometric part with a, some material part, which is the specific electric resistance or resistivity of copper measured at 20 degrees E. This is a value of 0.0175 in ohm square millimeter per meter, which means that we have to enter the length in meter and the cross section in square millimeters multiplied by some temperature dependent correction which I would like to neglect in this session. To get the temperature is a more difficult question because the temperature is a function of heat conduction in the board and of course cooling from the board surface. And I would say this is subject to an experiment or subject to numerical simulation, which uh, I showed in the, in the previous videos. But there is some estimate to get the temperature. And this is part of the design rule IPC 2221. To be precise, it's one or two pages in this very large volume of IPC 2221 document. Just an application. If we want to know the maximum current so that a given trace does not exceed 20k above ambient, we look for the width of the trace, for example 0.2 inches, which is five mil around 5 millimeters. Then we go to a line representing the thickness of the trace, say 1 ounce or 35 microns. We move up to the 20 degree K or C line and read on this axis the typical current, which is 10 or 11 amps. That's quite easy. But people were asking what is the, the background of this graphs? And in about year 2000, IPC hired Mike Juppie to investigate this and he found that the roots of the graphs are 
date, date back to 1956 was an investigation done by the Bureau of Standards for the US Navy. And that's one of the original graphs. This one is for, for 10 degrees C. You see a bunch of type writ, typewriter written data points. All of the lines represent uh, various board setups, materials, etc. If we go back to the 10K line and select few data points, that's, those are the ones in blue. So from the bunch of data, <laughs> they, I, the IPC selected the, max, the, the top line and took the points into the 2221, that's a typo. Google for Mike Chupi to find more of his articles about current carrying capacity, either historic or the new ones. Then we have another graph in 2221, and that's the graph is titled Internal Conductors, which means that the external conductor is a trace on top face of the PCB, and the internal conductor could be an a trace in, uh, in the vertical center of the PCB. Let us compare the values. We again go for 250 square mils and look for the 20 degree line, read the umps and it's five. That's perfectly 50% of the value from the external, calculate, uh, external trace. That's very mystic. Yeah. Do you believe it? I would not. And in fact, it's wrong. The numerical simulations show that an internal conductor is cooler than an external because it has more space to, for heat conduction to spread heat to the surface and then to cool it to the ambient. What we also don't know is this temperature, a maximum temperature or an average temperature in 2009, there was a major revision of this current carrying capacity story. Mike did the experiments and created the correlations. IPC called it 2152. What's the difference? These are the old points, the blue ones. The new ones are the yellow points. They changed the, the board setup. The, the layer stack. Instead of having a two-layer board with a completely flooded bottom layer, IPC decided to take to create the worst of the worst cases, which means we only have a one trace on a empty PCB block which means that we have only the top layer and no more copper inside the PCB. Of course, if this extra copper is no longer available, we have less heat spreading and of course more temperature for the same amount of current. And you see this, uh, while the old one has, um, take this point, 7 amps, to heat up to 20 degrees C, the new situation reaches 20 degrees at 5 amps. We can simulate this situ both situations, as you saw in the previous videos. This is the simulation for the B layer. 5 millimeter width, 11 amps input gives a temperature increase of 20 degrees Celsius in perfect agreement with, with the graph. And if we remove the bottom plane, the temperature rises to 50 degree at same current and same width. That's of course a tremendous increase. We can create more correlations or temperature scenarios for example, if we take the B layer and add as much as possible copper into the to the top layer, just by flooding 
the plane and leaving a fence or rim of FR4 around the trace, then the temperature is dropping because we have more heat spreading and instead of 20 degrees C or 20 K, the result is 17 K. And even more drastic in the monolayer situation, the temperature is dropping from 50 or the temperature excess is dropping from 50 to 30. So what is realistic? Of course, the, the true reality is a given board layout coming from Gerber files and uh, all this simulation can be done in detail. There are more strange effects in IPC 2221. Uh, bug number one is the x-axis of the graphs of the charts. So the, the horizontal axis is just the cross-section. But the cross-section of a trace determines the heating of the trace, but not the cooling of the trace. The cooling of the trace is determined by the footprint area of the trace on the PCB. So if, if these two traces have the same cross-section, the power dissipation is identical, but this trace, of course, cools better than this trace. There's a, a way to transform this situation to this situation, but I want to go into, into more details. The second bug I already mentioned is the misconcept of internal traces. An internal trace is cooling better than an external trace because of this extra little bit of area, heated area on the surfaces, and by this it gets a little bit cooler. Now you can do your create your own simulations, creating internal ground and power planes just for cooling this this trace and uh, yeah. the more copper the, the cooler the trace. The ultimate technique to get the temperature of the trace is either an experiment or a 3D dimensional simulation, for example done with TRM, where you can import all the details of your layout, including the Gerber files, all the, the drills and the inner layers. This is a four layer board. The different colors indicate the various layers. And let us apply seven amps on the top layer trace from here to here. This is the experimental infrared image. What we see is a hotspot there, some extended warm region here, a minimum temperature, some heated halo here. The same effects we see on the simulation. We have the hot spot here, we have some, some extended cool heating, we have the cold spot and we have the halo. And all of them are a result of the detailed layout. For example, here we can uh, deviate the heat by 90 degree into layer 2 and this is creating the halo or part of the halo and of course the temperature drop. The infrared image Tmax is about 38 degrees Celsius, the simulation around 40 degree. Agreement is quite quite nice. I don't want to talk much about the current carrying capacity of VIAs. This is also a matter of debate. If you want to look at experiments and simulation results, have a look at this case study um, document. This is an example of a detailed calculation. We, we have a current of 20, 24 amps in each of these three traces. Each trace has an individual temperature. Each trace has an individual current density pattern and it's impossible to get the temperature of the three traces by just reading the IPC graphs. 
what I wanted to tell in this presentation is that it's not sufficient to read the IPC graphs to calculate some temperature for a trace with current. You have to know the details to get a precise answer and to you have to do some simulations to get it. Thank you. Goodbye.